How are you all doing? Hey, Gathering Place. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in. I know that's right. She says, I got my heater on and my fire for my big dog, April Showers, bring pay to my knees. You know, that cold weather can bring pain <laughs> to your knees, to your elbows, to your shoulders, to your neck, to whatever. Stardust, hello, 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 Carolina Roots. How are you all? Thank you all so much for coming in. Thank you for coming in. I am waiting for my own ads to finish up on my channel, <clears throat> as well as waiting for some more people to come on in. Thank you all so much for being here. You all were here before I was. That's awesome. Awesome and amazing. I really do appreciate you guys. I do, I do, I do. Oh my goodness. It has been so cold here and raining. I cannot get, um, well, it's not time for me to actually plant a lot outside yet, but I have planted some things. The things I've gotten out there so far are either cool weather things, like I got my carrots out there already, and they've already germinated. I put those out there, I guess maybe it's been a couple of weeks now. They've already germinated. I am doing fantabulous. Thank you for asking. How you doing, Carolina Roots? How are you? How are you? How are you? So glad to see you. Yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <clears throat> yes, I was just saying all this rain. It's rain and cold here. It's very cold. Um, I'm in zone 7B. And for us, typically we're in shorts by now. Literally in shorts by now. But it is so cold. <laughs> I really could have a sweatshirt on or something right now. Is that cold? It's not just cold for a few hours. It's cold from like, well, it's been cold all day today, but typically it's cold from like four or five all the way until like noon the next day. Hey, Bree, how you doing? How you doing? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in. So good to see you. Doing good, getting some. Yes, it's been raining here all day long. I just hope it stops by this weekend because I want to get my potatoes outside. And it's about that time for me to go ahead and get them out there. Yes, I'll be grabbing a cup of coffee and listening. All right, Carolina Roots, that's fine with me. That coffee sounds good right about now. Because I am cold. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Tasha, how are you? How are you? Thank you for coming in. Welcome in, welcome in to the live. Thank you so much. How you doing, Mrs. Tasha? How are you? How are you? Yes. Are you getting all this rain where you are, Miss Tasha? Yes, because I wanted to know about rain. You know, I want some of you all that have been gardening for a while and that maybe have rain barrels, rain buckets, whatever you got collecting rain in it. I have a question. I'm going to wait till some more people get in here. I have a huge question that I just can't seem to get out of my mind. <laughs> Got my new uniform on. Okay, so you all have new uniforms now, Bree? Are they the same color and same everything? Just new, um, just new, or did they change something within the design or you know, something like that? Yes, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes, don't forget to thumbs up the live, guys, as you all come in. Appreciate that. A lot of rain, a lot of pain, but thankful for another day. Yes, the rain will have if you have any aches anywhere between the rain and the coolness of the rain this time of the year. It will get you. Hey, TLC, how you doing? How you doing? Welcome in. Thank you for coming. How are you doing today? Yes, we do all new color scheme. Okay, you're going to have to post something on IG or somewhere so I can see the uniform, Bree. Yeah, so snap a picture, send it to me so I can see the new uniform. Yes. So TLC, how are you doing today? How are you doing? Uh, and as you guys come in, I'll probably say this a, a bunch of times, but as you come in, um, if you could also let me know what zone you're in, I'd appreciate that. You know, you can just put the zone or the state, whatever you want. You don't have to put no specifics in, but the zone and the state would be good so we can familiarize ourselves with each other because you never know when somebody's in the same zone you're in and um, the things you can share, the things you can gather from one another. So definitely... Oh my goodness, yes. My pants are too tight. 
I'm giving, oh my goodness. <laughs> Sounds like you need to either order or lose some weight. Either order another set or lose some weight. Zone 8A. Okay. All right. I am seven. But you know what? I should have put that in my title. I will do that from now on. I'll put zone in my title, at least on my, for my lives. 8B South Carolina. Yes. Okay. Well, we next door neighbors. And isn't that something else to me, at least, that is really amazing how you know, I understand we're in different states, but we're right there next to each other. But we can have drastically different weather. Drastically different weather. Yes. And I've known a lot of people that are over in South Carolina can grow things I can't grow here. And you're that close, you know. All right. We have Cleveland in the house, Zone 6B. You know what? That's another thing I'm trying to learn. reason why I wanted you guys to put your zones in the chat is because I'm also trying to learn what zones are where, you know, without actually studying it or writing it down, I'm trying to start familiarizing myself with what zones are in what states. All right, Bree. All right. Yes. So we got 8A, 8B, 6B, and of course, 7B. And that's another thing that can get confusing because, you know, certain things like I know 7B can be in multiple places as well. Yes. Oh, wow. So we are having all this rain, but it is April and that is the month out of all months that we do tend to get a lot of rain. And that's okay because that's typically when uh, all like seedlings and things go outside. So they'll need that rain. Um, and we don't have to do the work. <laughs> that's why I'm mad about it. We do not have to do the work. But if it doesn't stop raining, we can't really get out there and plant what we need to plant. At least I can't. <laughs> I'm not going out there and pouring down rain. And it's been storming here a lot too. So I'm not about to get out there in the storm and the rain to um, plant anything. Hey, Mari, how are you? How are you? We are What? What? I know somebody else. Um, I was in somebody else's live earlier today. I don't know who because I've been all over the place. And somebody in the chat said they were waiting on the snow to melt. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yes, Mari, Mari, hello, how are you? 6B2, okay, Cleveland, Ohio, New Jersey, 6B. See, that's another thing. The zones are not, um, you would think that the zones would be either um, set up state by state or at least the upper half of the state and the lower half of the state some, and every place. I mean, it's enough numbers out here. Think about it. It's enough numbers out here for for all places to have their own zones. It doesn't work like that. Great time to take cuttings. Okay. I don't have anything to take cuttings from, really. <laughs> Not yet, but I'm working on it. Yes, expecting one. To, oh, my God. I'm so glad I'm not in Cleveland, girl. Oh, my goodness. I would say a prayer for Cleveland because I am glad I'm not in Cleveland. But I understand the one to three inches. I used to live in Omaha, Nebraska, so, you know, this was like, the snow was still either coming down or barely melting. Stardust, hello, hello, how you doing, Stardust? Welcome in, welcome in from Western Pennsylvania, 6B. Okay, so 6B is Ohio, New Jersey, and PA. Okay, see, that's interesting to me. That's interesting that, you know, uh, one zone can span. I guess they feel that the temperatures or the... Uh, planting for those areas are all the same going um, the same yes I agree zones should be their own so it should it should it, I mean think about it it's only so many states you know it's only so many so uh, is she here yet yeah, yes I'm here how you doing gathering place welcome into the live thank you for coming thank you for coming yes Carolina Root says our temps are going to drop into the mid 30 Thursday so I'm getting prepared. It's been in the 30s here for the last like week in the evenings at night. Oh my God, we got to turn the heat on. You better get up under the blanket. It is freezing. Uh, <laughs> it's freezing. It's freezing here at nighttime. And in the day, it's not that much. It's really cold outside. If I went outside, I would need a jacket or something at least, at the very least. So... It's been too cold um, to plant anything that needs warm soil uh, because it's dropping down.
for too long. It's not like we just, you know, it's going to drop down for a couple of hours and then the temperatures are going to rise again. It's dropping down every day, at least by the time night falls until noon the next day. That's a long period of time for it to drop down. Yes, do you have lantern bugs in your area? Um, I think we call them lightning bugs. You're talking about their, they're like black and their tails light up when they fly. Or you can see, they probably light up all the time, but you can see their tails light up at night. I haven't seen any here, but when I lived in the Midwest, oh my goodness. And that's another thing. We used to catch those as kids to say, I'm the scaredy cat garden. I don't know how I did that, but oh, it was the best thing in the world to catch them in your hand and then peek in and see their tails lighting up. If we're talking about the same thing, they didn't do anything or harm anything that I know of. I don't know what their purpose was, um, but they were all over the place. Yes, Gathering Place, here I am. Here I am, and there you are. Thank you for coming in. Yes, if anyone wants to help me with watch hours, please run my playlist. Okay, the Gathering Place is trying to get some watch hours and looking for some playlists, buddy. So anybody in the, in the stream that would like to do that and help her out, no, they are huge. Okay, nope. Then I've never seen a lat lantern bug. I'm going to have to Google that and see what it looks like. Because the ones um, that I know of, they're pretty teeny. They're tiny enough to capture. And you could capture them because when they're flying, they are lighting up. So you can actually see them. You know, we would be outside, you know, back in the good old day. You can go outside at night and run around for hours at a time. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. Nobody was doing anything to anybody. So we were always outside at night in the summertime and catching them. Yes, TLC said, our weather is crazy. It was 72 yesterday. That's the problem I'm having. That's the pro And I did plan a couple of things because we had a good two-week stretch where our lowest temperatures were in the 60s. And then all of a sudden, it like changed. And we haven't dropped down to frost, but it's awful cold for some things. So I said, you know what? I'm not putting anything else out there that can't withstand it. Like I planted my blueberries, but blueberries can actually withstand below zero. They can, they can, they can hang all the way up to about 100, a little bit above 100, all the way down. It's like 15 degrees or, or a little bit lower than that. So they fine out there. And everything else that I have out there, and I went ahead and planted my carrots, and they've sprouted. Um, I do have some mustard greens. I did that video. I do have some of my mustard greens that have now poked their head through. But, you know, I planted an awful lot, and I only see four spots that they coming through. So I'm going to give them, I'm going to give the rest of them in that bed like another week because these sprouted a few days ago. So I know to be patient. Hey, how you doing, the sweet? Hello, hello, hello. The sweet spot is in the house. Hello, hello. Then I will move to NC. I hate those. <laughs> well, come on, because I have never seen one. <laughs> never seen one. Yes, lantern bugs are colorful and have many legs, and they kill trees. I'm going to have to Google that. I'm going to have to Google that. I'm going to let you know if, if it's something that's here that maybe I just don't know of. Or I've not seen, because, um, you know, we got the mountains and the oceans, and so may not be where I'm at, but maybe they could be common in other areas here. So I don't know about that. I don't, I, I'm not, I don't, I've never heard of a lantern bug before. And you know if it's out there, I'm probably scared of it. Hey, Auntie Mama, how are you? Welcome in, welcome in. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Yes, our temps in New Jersey went to the 30s, but I want to plant next week on Easter Sunday. I want to get my potatoes out there. So I have a, I got a list, a list of everything that I'm ready to plant and I'm waiting. This is the dates that I can plant them <laughs> and I'm waiting and praying that the weather cooperates. And two things, I need to be getting out there, onions and potatoes. Uh, there are some things on here that I won't be able to plant until summer for a fall garden. But the rest of them I do need to plant in April. But I still have a couple of weeks into April before I need to actually start getting them out there. Yes. Going to cover my basil, rosemary, parsley, and potatoes. TLC. 
how uh, cold did you say it's going to get down? TLC, you shouldn't have to cover your rosemary um, at all. My rosemary, my rosemary is an evergreen. My rosemary stays outside year-round. I don't cover it or anything. It, however, hey, Ray Mac, how you doing? Hello, 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 fam. How are you? Thank you for coming in here. How you doing, Ray Mac? Yes. Awesome sauce. Ew, Mari, I just looked up lantern flies. They look like trouble. I'm going to have to look those up because I do not know what they look like. I have no clue. I have no clue. You should not, your potatoes should be fine because I'm getting ready to plant those now. Those should be fine and your rosemary should be fine as well. Hey, Edward, how are you? Thank you for coming in. How you doing, Edward? Hello, hello, hello. Mari said, I saw your vid on peppermint and bought the tags and I'm ready. That, you know what? Since I put that peppermint oil out there, I haven't even seen any out on my deck at all. I've seen them in the yard. I ain't seen them on my deck. So, um, but it's been raining. I've been watching. I go out there like, every time it stops raining, I'm running outside if I'm home. Because I'm trying to watch. I'm looking for any holes, any signs that they've been out there because it's been raining so much that I know my initial peppermint is gone. But since I did that video... Uh, the day I did that video was the actual day I put them out there. And I think I uploaded the video the next day. I haven't had to redo it since then. I haven't seen not one squirrel. Nada. None. So, I need to redo it, but it keeps raining. Hey, James. Got game. How you doing? Hello, hello, hello. The sweet says the roots are good, but the leaves are a mess on these things. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no. Marie says, they are harmless to humans, but they are fast and land on everything. Oh, my goodness. I wouldn't want that around either. I would not want that around either. TLC said, the garden, low 30s. Your rosemary should be fine. Like I said, I leave mine out there. It was down to what? In low, uh, the teens this winter. That's out there. It's been out there for three years. My rosemary plant has been growing for three years. And I actually called a nursery here when I first uh, planted it to ask, what do I need to do? That and my strawberries. The strawberries will go and lie dormant and um, they'll just come back to life in the spring. And that's what they're doing. I went out there and did some filming today on them. And the rosemary, they tell me, this is an evergreen. It's nothing going to happen to it. So, but cover it if you feel comfortable. <laughs> Don't be talking about... I'm going to really call myself Chef. That's my other channel. But anyway, don't be telling people I said don't cover them and then it's an epic fail. <laughs> cover them up if that's what makes you feel good. Hey, Canadian proud. How you doing? How you doing? Don't have autocorrect. <laughs> don't you hate? Oh, don't we all hate autocorrect? I love autocorrect on my side when y'all mess up and it be autocorrect because it be cracking me up. I'm sorry. I have to laugh at it. Yes. I see that autocorrect. <laughs> Don't it make you feel some kind of way when it's you, though, and it does that to you? We know what you mean, Canadian proud. We know what you mean. Yes. Auntie Mama saying hey to Edward, the sweet spike. <laughs> yes, Canadian proud. Yes, uh-huh. I am ready for those disgusting tomato hornworms. Yes. Let me tell you something about those tomato hornworms. Last year, I went outside. And I had a huge, well, for me, I had a huge harvest of tomatoes. I had a total harvest. I count everything. I had a total harvest last year of 67 tomatoes in my little container. So I was happy about that. But I went outside one day, and by coincidence, because you know they look just like the stems, I saw one. Oh, my God, if I had filmed that, y'all would have been rolling on the floor. I was so scared to get that thing. I couldn't pry it off. I couldn't, I thought I could just hit it off or do something. I couldn't pry it off or anything. And I even was standing out there Googling, how do I get rid of this? So you're going to have to pick it off. Oh my God, y'all should have seen me working up my nerve to pick this thing off. And then I tried to pull it off. It wouldn't come off. And I said, if I really grab this thing and pull it off and it squishes in my hat, I'm done. <laughs> so I said, that ain't happening. That's not happening. So I tried to pull it off. I know, look at Gavin Place coming up with the worms. So I finally found a stick, and I made it like pointy, and I was able to get that stick in between it and the branch and yank it down. But guess what? 
I yanked it down. I got it out the bed and I got rid of it. But guess what? Went out the next day. I had 13 of them. 13. I was able to get all of them but one off. And that one, I ended up cutting that tomato branch off because I couldn't get rid of I said, oh, no. Because see, at that point, half my tomatoes were still out. I said, y'all ain't getting my tomatoes. It ain't happening. I'm going to have to get up some nerve somewhere, somehow, and get rid of you. So I'm kind of ready for them this year. Don't ask me how, but I, I know what to look for. And I, they did come at the end of the season. Another gardener told me they typically come at the end of the season and you'll find them higher up on your plants as opposed to lower down. So I'm going to be looking for them. <laughs> Not that I want them to come, but I'm going to be looking for them. The sweet pot said, I'm scared of those tomato worms. Talking about a scaredy cat. I know, that's why I just fessed up. I'm surprised. I just fessed up. That's why I call myself the scaredy cat garden because I'm scared of everything out there. There's no sense of me acting like I'm not. Maybe one day I'll get over it, but I'll just have to work through this. I am the scariest person in the world of everything except for bees. Our bees don't bother me. I like them. They just be buzzing around. <laughs> I know y'all think she nah, she going crazy on us. Hey, how to garden? Hello, hello. How are you? Thank you for coming in. How you doing, how to garden? How are you? Yes, Canadian says, I left my herb pot out over the winter and it all came back and we had some cold. Th yes, those herbs, you know what else was out there? My oregano and my thyme. That's right. They did the same thing. I left them out there. I didn't cover nothing up. They were out there all winter and they are thriving like never before right now. Yes, they are doing wonderful. I'm about to go out there and show y'all. I am amazed at that. Yes. Hey, Erica, how are you? Thank you for coming in. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, TLC. The sweet spot says, oh, no. But yes, 13 of those things. So I, I took my little stick and I was prying them out. And as they fell, I would pick them up and get rid of them. Each one, each one. And I did it. I got rid of every last single one of them. I was scared to even go in the house because I said, here they're going to come again. But I went out the next day, and I didn't have any. After they left, though, the temperatures, it was at the end of the season. And although it was hot, and I've heard people say, don't use neem oil when it's hot. I used it anyway. I used it all over the place. I used it all over the whole thing because that's all I had. And I didn't think about dish soap or anything at the time. That's all I had. But when I did that, my tomatoes survived, and they left. So, I, those things are disgusting. They're big. And the thing I hate the most about them is they are absolutely, positively, 100% the exact same color as the steel. There is no difference. So, you're standing out there. I was going out there just staring at the plant up and down, up and down, trying to find it. It was something else. It was something else. Canadian Pride says, Erica, wet and cold. Yes, it's wet and cold, wet and cold. Mari says, when I saw the hornworm for the first time, I screamed and ran into the house. BT will kill them. They multiply and eat up in tw they multiply and eat up in 24 hours. And I have BT now. Last year, we were in the heart of the middle of COVID during the summer. I couldn't get anything. There was nothing on our shelves here. And every time I tried to order, everything was saying out of stock, out of stock. I, I couldn't get it. And I surely couldn't have gotten it in time. But guess what? I ordered all that stuff. I got, it in, I got it in my garage. I said, I'm not going into this season without having the things I need because that's the one thing. Guys, let me say something. That is the one thing that I really have learned is that when something attacks your garden, whatever it is, insect, worm, rabbit, squirrel, whatever, you really and truthfully do not have time to go and get whatever it is you need to control it. By the time you go probably the next day or the day after to the store, get it and come back, it's infested. So the best thing to do is buy the things that you think you may need to control whatever insect and pest you have seen in your garden over previous years or something general that will get a lot of them and keep it on hand. Then the furthest you got to run is in your house. Run, get it, and attack it as soon as you see it. If you see holes in your leaves and you look on the back of them and you see what the pest is, 
attack it right then. You don't have time to go to the store. You don't have time to order anything. So it's best to get that stuff and have it on hand. The one thing I need to pick up that I do not have is some Dawn dishwashing liquid. I need to get that. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I have had, I have never had them, but my tomatoes are in containers on my porch. TLC, my tomatoes are in containers on my deck. And I still have, and my deck is up high. Because that's why, I, that's the main reason why I garden on the deck right now. Because I don't have a yard. My yard is, it is a yard out there. But that yard literally goes straight down. I can't even walk it. If I walk it, I'm going to be a minute getting back up it. <laughs> and be a prayer and I don't slide down it. That's how steep it is. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I don't have a garden. I just like Pam. <laughs> yes, Gathering Place. She's one of my members on both my channels. She's been with me a long time. Yes, and we just chat on, on our videos all the time. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And I love her back. The Sweet Spot said, if you had chickens, they'd be some happy girls with 13. They probably would, but I don't have no chickens. Girl, I'd be scared of chickens. I don't see how y'all do it. I be watching people have their chickens, and I, I love fresh form eggs. <laughs> I'll take those any day. But they pick the chicken up. I'm like, I don't know how come I'm so scared of everything. <laughs> but I hey, dirt diggers, how are you? Oh my God, I haven't seen you in a long time. We got the UK in the house. Awesome. I've been stacking up on supplies as well, says How to Garden. Yes, if you can. And even if you have to do it one by one, I didn't order all my stuff at once. I order some here, I order some. But as the season gets here, I'm just keep on ordering, keep on ordering. By the time this stuff grows, if I see some, and if I think I need it, it's going it's gonna to be out there. Yes, is BT the same as DT? No, I don't think it is. I have not heard of DT. Um... If you are thinking you've heard somebody say that, they might be saying BT. But I have a link in it in my description of what I'm talking about. And it's it's not, that I know of, it's not the same. But I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure on that. Mari says, great advice, stock up. I order and everything online. Yes, especially if you're ordering it online, go ahead now just in case shipping is slow or whatever. And you will have whatever you need on hand that way. Like I said, I learned that the hard way because I got attacked by those tomato hornworms and I had an attack last year of army worms. And when I could not get any supplies, they didn't have BT, they didn't have anything. The only thing I had was dish soap. And guess what? I didn't even have Dawn. I had palm olive. I had the blue palm olive, so I used it. And trust me, I'm like, you know what? This is dish soap. <laughs> I can saturate these plants with this dish soap because I can wash it off, I know for sure. <laughs> and that's what I did. And that's how I got rid of the army worms. I was going out there two and three times a day with my little bottle and just, I was saturating everything. It worked, but it was a lot of work. Had I had the right stuff, it would have been a lot easier. I probably could have contained them, and they wouldn't have been so. But those army worms were everywhere, and they were black. They were black with little bitty, like, yellow or white markings on them, small markings. So they blend in really well with the dirt. So I'm out there in the dirt, like, <laughs> trying to find them, you know. It was a hot mess, but I fought back last year. I fought back. But I'm ready. I'm ready for them this year. Yes, Marcy's chickens can be nasty, but they sure are. I know that's right, Wari. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I love a piece of chicken, especially fried. <laughs> Carolina Wilson's says, BT is for caterpillars and DT is for small crawling. Okay. Okay. So I don't have... DT. So maybe I need to get some DT because I don't have any DT. I, I want to get whatever. I just want to have it. I may never use it. Hey, Brother Irv, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, I still all oh, let me tell y'all something. Brother Irv had a beautiful garden last year. Brother Irv, I don't know how you got those big old beautiful peppers and thing. You had a beautiful garden last year. Your garden was on point. Yes, so you should have started your garden, yes. And I was just talking about whatever supplies you need, 
Get them ahead of time. So if something attacks your plants, you ready to fight back. You, you don't have to think about, oh, what do I need? You ain't got to Google it. It's right there. It's right there. They're so ugly. See, yes, they are. Does covering up your containers with plastic help keep out those hornworms? I have no clue because the year before that, I didn't have any. Last year was the first year I had them. So I don't know. Um, but I am researching now what can I do to prevent them from ever coming. That's what I... But I'll tell you one thing that I did last year. Um, I use just... It's called Just Naturally Potting Soil. It's wonderful. It has everything in it. The perlite, the peat moss, the casting worm, worm castings. It has everything in it. Um... That's what I used the first year that I guard. That's all I used. I didn't have an insect, a bug. I didn't have anything. Last year, I couldn't get my hands on but a little bit of it because the store sold out that fast. And so I ended up buying a potting soil that was organic, but it was by miracle Grow. And last year, the containers that I had that miracle Grow organic soil in is the containers that got the army worm and it's the containers that got the uh, tomato horn worms. My containers that still had only just natural soil in it, there was not an insect in it. This year, I got the just naturally soil in all my containers. So I'm getting rid of this stuff. I don't know if it had anything to do with it or not, but I'm not taking that chance any anymore. Mario says, BT is only effective on crawling insects. I ordered the powder and a mister. Okay. I have just the liquid. Uh, Maurice is discovering up here. Okay, so I answered it. The sweet spot says they're so ugly. Brother Urs says, hey, I started my garden. How to garden says, if you go out at night with a black light, the horn worms glow. Really? All righty now. Wow, see how you learn something every day. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to remember that. Really? <laughs> oh, that's good because it's hard to see those things. That's really good to know how to garden. That's really good. Brother Herb says, I'm doing it better than I did last year. The rain came out of nowhere. Yes, it has been pouring down here for the last few days, and it's supposed to rain for the rest of this week. I just hope it stops by Sunday. Um, not, I mean, it's Easter, but I have some things I want to plant that day as well. All right, Auntie Mommy, thank you so much for coming in. You have a wonderful Bible study. I appreciate you. Yes, I made my garden wider you should have because you did amazing yes you did right plant defense is key yes it is yes it is i agree with that brother herb yes carolina Ruth says the plan my plan this year is to outplant all the bugs i will overgrow to feed us all hopefully yes that's a good idea that is a very good idea yes maury says i read that the hornworm is a moth and comes at night to lay eggs and those are the worms. Yep, that's right, that's right, that's right. So covering up should stop them from laying their eggs on your plants. Now that would be a thought, but you know what? When do you know when to cover them up? Because you can't cover them up um, indefinitely. So how would you know when to cover them up? Erica speaking to Carolina Roots. Yes, Miss Tasha says, really didn't know that. I didn't know that. E You're talking about the glowing? I didn't know that either. I had no clue. Wow. Now I need to get a black light. I wish I could find a flashlight with a black light bulb in it. I'm going to Google and see what kind of black light I can get. I'm, it's going to have to be something that's handheld. They say marigold helped to repel them. Oh, really? Now, that's the one thing. I don't have any flowers probably should and I know that they bring in the pollinators and everything but I have I have all these pollinators and stuff all around anyway I don't know where they're coming from but <laughs> I'm not a flower person so to speak but I might be planting some marigolds I think I might have some you're welcome brother herb you're welcome you're welcome yes 
Yes, Caroline Rue says, hey, sister. Nastasha says, yes, the, the glowing. Uh-huh. I didn't know that either. That is amazing, and that's awesome information. That is awesome information. Little Brown says, the hornworms come from certain kind of insect in the summer. Use the emo on the rim. That's what I used last year. That was the only thing I had on hand uh, when they came, and I got his, I got them all off. Then I literally saturated the plant with it, and it was pretty hot. And I've been told you don't supposed to use it when it was hot, but I had nothing else to use. And I thought of it like this. If the neem oil is going to kill the plants, if I don't put it on there, the hornworm is going to kill it. So I have a better chance of putting the neem oil on it, and maybe the neem oil won't kill it. Maybe it's, it'll cool down in just enough for the neem oil just to work, or I can just do nothing. So I chose to use the neem oil. I, you're talking about saturated. I'm surprised I still have some neem oil. <laughs> I guess that's because you still dilute it. Because if you didn't dilute it, that bottle be gone. It would be gone. I, I mean, the plant was dripping with neem oil. I'm like, I'm going to spray you. And guess what? They didn't come back. And I didn't see a one. I sprayed the topsoil of the dirt. I sprayed the plant from the roots to as far as I could reach. <laughs> I did. I did, I did, I did. Little Brown, hello, hello, welcome in to the live. Thank you for coming. How are you doing, Little Brown? Yes, the hornworms come from a certain kind of insect. Yes, yes, Little Brown, Little Brown. How the Gordon says, glad to give a good tip. It's how I keep the hornworms under control without spray. That's amazing. I am, I am really, matter of fact, you know what? So I won't forget that. Let me, let me write that down. Black light, horn worms glow. Uh, Bro Farmer got everybody right, but it's a good thing. Let me write that down. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, <clears throat> Mari says, get the stick black light, easy to handle. Okay. I don't know anything about black lights, but I'm going to find out about the stick black light. That would be wonderful. I'm getting one. It's going to be in my supply cabinet. That's a good one. Yes. Brother Irv says the pollen here is crazy. Not really any pollen here yet at all. None really. TLC says the only flowers I grow are marigolds. Calendu calendula? Calendula. I hope I'm saying it right. Calendula. Calendula? I hope that's right. And look at her putting all these words in the stream. She know I can't read them. Calendula and Nasturtium, Nasturtium, Nasturium, 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 Nasty Flowers. No, I'm just <laughs> because they are edible too. Marigolds are edible. I didn't know marigolds were edible. Or marigolds were edible. Marigolds draw beetles. Be careful. Oh. The sweet spot says, they say you can use it at night. Oh, the deem oil. Yes, yes. And you know what? Come to think about it, it was evening when I sprayed them like that. Because it was at the end of the day that I went out there and had those 13. So, yes, it was. Yes. Carolina Ruth says, I got marigolds in containers so I can move them around to other parts of the garden. And I'm hoping my sunflowers and other plants bring in predator, uh, predator insects. Okay, that would be awesome if, it, if that, that would be awesome. And they should, they should. I have calendula, ca ca calendula, 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 calendula. <laughs> Looks like calendar, but I know it's not right. I heard it's a marigold. I noticed white flies like them. Okay. Yes, we need to bring in the good insects and the good pollinators. And we need to watch out for all the bad ones. That's for sure. Wow. Yes, I have, I've got down black light. The black light stick. And DT. What does the actual DT stand for? What do those initials, what is the actual words that go to DT, D like dog, T like Tom, DT? Anybody know? Tell me in the uh, chat. Uh, let me see. Was that Carolina Roots that told me the difference between the DT? Let me go back up here and see if I can see that right quick. 
BT is for cow poop. Carolia, Carolina Roots said, and DT is for crawling insects. DT, can you tell me what the actual D and T stand for in the DT? I know about the uh, BT, uh, and that's for crawling. Let me um, write that down. Hey, Patricia. Hello, hello. How you doing? Welcome in. Good evening. Good evening. So glad you're here. Thank you for coming in. TLC says, um, it is a type of marigold, but it has medicinal properties. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, Don, how are you? Welcome in. Thank you for coming. How you doing? How you doing, Don? All right. The sweet spot says TLC. I got it in an herb garden pack. Yes. Caroline Roos says it's a white powder. Oh, okay. Thank you, Patricia. Let me uh, write that down. Because, you know, I was Googling something one time. I think it was BT before I actually... Um, D-I-A-T, okay. Before I actually knew what B-T stood for, something else that had the initials came up. Then I got confused. So I learned to find out what the initials stand for so that I know I'll buy the right thing. And because it, it's important. Because, you know, um, sometimes when you're online... And you're trying to purchase things. Um, I won't say companies are doing it on purpose. But if they know something else is popular. They'll sometimes use those initials. Or those names of whatever that product is. To get their product going. So. You got to be careful. The sweet spot said I was trying to grow some things for teas. Yes. I'm, I might need to grow some um, hibiscus. I love hibiscus. I don't have many herbs out there right now. I need to put some more out there for as much as I cook. But I do have, I've been trying to grow ginger. I need to be able to grow ginger. I have not been able to get ginger to grow no matter what I do. And I don't understand. I'm in a zone that, that says it's supposed to grow good. I'm like, okay, I must be doing something wrong. So I'm going to have to research. Maybe I'm planting it at the wrong time or I'm not feeding it the right something. I'm not sure yet. I only use it as a, okay. Okay. I, you know what? I try to only use everything as a last resort, but I want to have it on hand. Like I was saying earlier, I think before you came into the lab, Patricia, that I realized last year when, when I had the attack of the hornworms or when I had the attack of the army worms, you don't have time to order, sometimes go to the store to buy these products when something happens, when you have an outbreak of something so it's best to have it on hand even if you never use it you don't even have to open it just have it there it's kind of like having your it's kind of like your pantry your your survival pantry they don't call it survival pre preppers prepping pantry it's called something else i just can't think of what it is right it's kind of like your pantry you know how you have you're not planning on eating this food but in case of emergency you got it so that's what I want. That's what I, and I've been stocking up on things slowly but surely. Because this stuff can be, that's another thing. It can also be expensive. So you don't want to get in a situation where you need more than one thing. You need something for this and something for that. And you can't get it because it's too much. Sometimes things just cost too much. It's like, oh, I got to wait a minute. Hey, broke farmer, how you doing? How you doing? You're not late. The party's still going on. Ain't no late coming in here. Nobody is ever late. Yes, great live, a lot of info shared. Thank you, Carolina Roots. Thank you, thank you, thank you. DT is also safe for pets to get rid of worms and helps prevent fleas. Oh, okay. I don't have any pets, but that's good for any of those that do have pets. I don't have any pets at all, but that's good. That is good to know. Hey, little bit Elijah. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in. Hey there. How are you? Another one of my channel members coming into the live. Thank you so much. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Edward Smore, thank you so much for asking people to thumbs up the live. I appreciate that. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, Erica say, hey, cuz. Yep, we got cuz in the house. Everybody's cousins in the house. Bro Farmer is here. Yes, awesome, awesome, and amazing. So, yes, how to Gordon says, hello, Bro Farmer. Yes, so that's another thing about some of these products, you know. Unless you've been gardening for a long time and you are you have gotten these because we don't use these things up, thank God. We don't use them up every season. Um, 
because most of this stuff you have to dilute and it's a teaspoon here and a spoon there. and if you use it properly and only use it when necessary you will have this stuff for a while but it takes time to gather this stuff or to get this stuff over time hey nix picks hello hello how you doing thank you for coming in so I try to tell everybody, you know, get what you can, when you can, and just keep it moved. Keep stocking up. It's kind of like, it's kind of like when you're prepping for food. It, nobody's cab, cabinet or pantry became stocked overnight. You don't, whether you're canning the food, whether you're buying canned goods. You don't go out and buy a whole pantry full of canned goods. Maybe every time you go to the store, you pick up a few here. You pick up a few here of what you may need. And so that's what we should do with the supplies that we need uh, in our, for our, our garden as well. Hey, hey, Dawn is speaking. And how to garden says, hello, Nick's Picks. How you doing, Nick's Picks? Oh, my goodness. Nick's Picks has an amazing garden. Yes. And Nick's Picks, aren't you doing a, let me get it right, hydroponic garden this year? Are you doing the hydroponic garden this year, Nick's Picks? Yes, just set Dollar Tree pots out for rain. Yes, yes, there you go, there you go. Yes, indeed, yes. And that's another thing, it does not have to be expensive. I know everybody keeps asking me, where did you get those pots from, <laughs> my red pots? Well, first of all, the red pots are, I think, 13 and a half to almost 14 gallon pots. So that means I can get at least three plants in each one because typically you plant something in a five-gallon bucket and it's good. One, one plant in a five-gallon bucket. So typically I can get three plants in each one. I now have 10 of those. So that's 30 plants. Now with herbs, I can squeeze a few more in there. But it was cheaper for me to buy those red containers, which just so happened to be my favorite color, red. But they got them in every color because I got them from Home Depot. They only cost me $11. The five-gallon buckets, at least here where I live, cost them five to seven bucks. Okay, I ain't the math person, but do the math. <laughs> so, I could have something pretty and cheaper than if I had to buy the buckets because ain't nobody giving nothing away here. You can't find no free nothing as far as like that's concerned child not in the store the sweet spot says they talk about you a lot on facebook i didn't know container crops was the name of your page i was looking for security cat gardener oh who talks about me a lot on facebook you know what on facebook i messed up <laughs> and i don't know how to correct it um i have two facebook pages nope i have one facebook page i have two facebook groups i have one of my groups is Cooking with Chef and More. That is actually my main channel on YouTube. And then there is Container Crops. I have a Container Crops group. I cannot post anything on Facebook under Container Crops. I have to post it under Chef because my group, I guess, was started up under my page. I would love to be able to separate it and have a page that's container crops as long with the group, but I don't know how. I am not tech savvy, so I don't. Yes, it is. On Instagram, my Instagram for container crops is, you can look, it'll come up other, other it will come up under either Scaredy Cat Gardener or container crops. Yes. Nick Speak says, yes, we are still playing around. It takes time. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. The sweet spot says, in the Black Girls Grow group. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is container crops. Yes. Nick's Pick says, love my neighborhood. Neighbors are always putting gardening stuff on the curb. I... Oh, that's amazing. That's good. That is good. All right. Thank you, Hotter Garden. Go ahead and cook us up some good dinner. I'll be there as soon as the live ends for dinner. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Awesome and amazing. I just give up on Facebook, LOL. <laughs> no, I don't. I like to post. Um, I post my, my cooking in a lot of different cooking groups, and I post my um, container crops gardening stuff in a lot of gardening groups. Um, it's a lot of people over there, just like over here, that needs information or 
wants information or looking for different things. So yeah, I post a lot over on both of them. What I can't stand personally too much is IG. I don't know what's going on with IG, but every time I post them on IG, I lose people. So I don't post over there often. I post just enough to, I guess, say I posted. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, my Facebook group, guys. And everybody, please feel free. Please join over there on the Facebook group because I'll probably be sharing a lot more over there. I'm going to probably eventually learn. That's what I want to do. Learn how to do a live from Facebook and a live here. I've done it once, a live on both at one time. I don't remember how I set it up, though. But yes, yes, the groups are better than my real, really family and friends. on The groups are. People are wonderful in the groups. They really are. Hey, Nina. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in. Thank you for coming. How are you doing? Welcome in. Welcome in. So glad to see you, Nina. Hey, hey. How are you? Yes. Yes. The, I, I agree with that. Um, I agree with this sweet spot. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Awesome. 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 Yes. You know what? I got on my thing. I haven't even asked that question yet. I have on my title. Who's collecting rainwater? Yay or nay? And now that I got 20 people in the stream, I need to ask a question. I, this is puzzling me. The rain barrels typically are hooked to the gutters so that the water will drain from the gutters into your rain barrel. Okay, I got that. I understand that. But the thing about that that's puzzling me is I have had gutters cleaned before. And that is some of the most disgusting water coming off the roof there is. Now, this is nothing. I'm not talking about catching the leaves or catching the bugs because you can use a screen for that. The actual water, it almost looks rusted sometimes. The water coming out of gutters is filthy. So why collect the rainwater from a gutter? Somebody help me on this because I have been, I'm at a loss. That doesn't make any sense to me. What am I missing? What am I because I need to get started collecting some water. And I ain't collecting it from no gutters. Because I'm like, that's nasty water. <laughs> I got some 10 gallon grow bags on the, on the way. Mostly for fruit trees. I'll build the soil with the cover crop. Then transplant. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. All right. Thank you, Mari. Thank you. You have a wonderful dinner. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Mari. Yes. Always collecting that rain and snow water. I need more right now. Nick's Picks is not yet. Yes, I have the same question. And you know birds are up there doing. Amen, Nick's Picks. So how is that water? I understand how rain water is so good. But do you know the most disgusting stuff you're putting on your plants from that rain water? If it's coming off of a gutter? It's gutter water. It's no more good rain water. It's gutter water, people. Somebody got to scold me on that because I'm, I'm lost. And I'm not about to do that. Now, I do want a rain barrel, but I want one that I can have the top of it open and put a screen or a covering off of it and just let the rain go right into it. Now, that's my ideal, but I haven't been able to find exactly what I want yet. Yes, Edward says, thanks for coming, Mari. Patricia says, that rainwater out of your gutter simply needs to strain. If you don't have screens on your gutters, you'll have all the leaves and dirt in there. Yes, okay, I get that about being strained. But I've seen the rainwater coming from the gutters with strainers on it. And it still looks like dirty, rusted water that's not going to be, nothing, it's not going to collect the restrainer. It's just like brown water coming out of pipes or something because it's so dirty up there. I'm missing something. Carolina Roos says, can you use a cover crop for bare root fruits? Can you use a cover crop for bare? I'm not sure about that. I don't want to I don't want to steer you wrong, but if anybody else in the chat knows that answer, please answer that. Um Oh no, the sweet spot is asking Carolina Roots. Okay, good one. 
good one. Yes, I just picked up on that. I read that wrong. Yes, I read that wrong. Yes, Miss Tasha says, if you get one with a screen, please do a video or post. Okay, I will. That's what I'm looking for. Now, I found one today that has a screen on it, but it's a small screen. And I'm like, seem like it may take a long time for water to collect in it. I would like one where the entire top is a screen. Now, that's what I would like, or at least half of it, because this one had it where you could actually plant plants in the front of it, and it was a small, like, rectangular part in the back that had a screen on it, but it wasn't even the whole back half of it. Yes. Uh-huh. Reborn. Reborn's Elias. Oh, you're talking about little bit Elias. Oh, I just noticed the name change, and I only noticed it because Nick's pick said it. Ah, because I saw the little bit in the front half, and I didn't notice you had changed the rest of your name. Okay, and the reborn's like, okay, awesome. Sorry, I mean screens on your gutters. Yes, I knew what you meant, Patricia. I knew what you meant. Yes, Carolina Roots is saying to the sweet spot, before I put the tree in, I'll do a cover crop, chop it, then sit. Late fall transplant. Okay. Okay, that's nice to know for next time. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I am looking for something that has a larger area. Um, a larger area for, and I hate you have, I, you got to have something to sit it on too because most of the spouts are lower. And, you know, if you want to put just a regular water can under it or something to get your water out of it, it will not fit. You're going to have to elevate it in some form or fashion. Yes. But that's what I wanted to know. I, I, you know, that's the title. And I almost forgot the whole thing about rain barrels and anybody collecting rain. I want to collect the rain so bad. But I can't get myself to collect it from the gutters. I just, I just can't. Instead of just using bag soil, I want to build the soil for these bigger pots so it's kind of self-sufficient. Okay. That, that would be amazing, uh, Carolina Roots. That's going to be amazing. Now, <clears throat> I like the grow bags. I really like the grow bags. I may end up with a few grow bags myself for different things to send them around. Because um, I still have a, a, little, a few more areas where I can put a few more plants at. Oh, wow. Yes, yes, yes. So I, 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 I got to find something for my rain. For, for my rain, but I can't see collected it off the gutter. <coughs> that's that's really puzzling me. Now, I was told Green, I wish I could remember the name of the channel, Green, Green Wizard. If any of you all know Green Wizard, um, he does a lot of things, scientific things with gardening and stuff. He has a wealth of knowledge. He has a YouTube channel, Green Wizard. And he was telling me that the if I need to use faucet water, you know, water coming, you know, out of your faucet, just out of a regular hose, and I can't collect, because, you know, some people can't collect the rainwater. I'm pretty sure they might, but it's against the law in some places to collect rainwater. He said, what you want to do is take the water coming from your hose, put it in something like, run some in a bucket or something, and let it sit at least 24 hours. He said all of the corrosion and anything, the minerals or anything that are negative in that water will drain to the bottom within 24 to 48 hours. Then you can use it off the top and it'll be clean, good water. So that's what I have been doing for the last couple of years. And my plants have done very well. What I typically do, I have several, um, I have several watering cans, and I typically fill those up. Then after I fill them up, I put them in a plastic bag. I tie the plastic bag up, and I keep them that way on my deck. And whenever I go out to water, I just get one and do my water and get one or two or whatever I need. Because last year, I didn't need to water that much because it actually rained enough. So every, by the time my plants was getting dry, here come the rain, hallelujah. So <laughs> I didn't have to do any of that. 
So that was a wonderful, but who knows from year to year. So anybody that is using water directly from your um, faucet, your drain spout, that would be a good way to, you know, do it. You could even take your hose and run some in a bucket. Close the bucket up and let it sit. He said, just don't use the very last, like, inch of water that's in there and rinse the container out before you do it again. Yes, a lady on Facebook told me to buy a black trash can, put it on my porch to catch the rain from the sky. Yes, you can do that. That's that's what I want to do. But I, the only difference is I was trying to find one that was an actual rain barrel that had a top on it. Uh, because even though the sweet, you're catching the rainwater as it comes down, which is what we really want. Um, as the wind blows, you may get debris or leaves as birds fly over and make a pit stop. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so, you want some kind of covering of now there are mesh um there I should have put a link in my description for that there are mesh um rain barrel covers that you can buy I know they sell them on Amazon they're not that expensive well I shouldn't say they're not that expensive it's going to go according to size but most of the ones I saw no matter what the size were between uh, nine and fifteen dollars so you could do that and the mesh thing it goes over it then it has like a drawstring to it so you can pull it tight against it so you could buy the black trash can and get one of those and put over it that would do you good that's my that's my last resort is to do that is to get if i can't find a barrel that's already made up like that then i'm going to have to go that route and get something and buy a mesh covering and put over it and just let the water go in it and the mesh covering will keep in. That's another thing you want to keep out insects. So you want to, even if you do the black trash can, you want to use some kind of covering over it. So you won't end up with bugs in there. And then you still got to strain it out or get them out or clean it out. We ain't got time for that. Or we don't want to do that. I, <laughs> I don't want to do it. Yes. The sweet spot says, yes, yeah, she did say to buy one with the top on it to close. Yes. Some have a spout at the bottom a spout at the bottom yes they do yes they do and that's what i was saying uh broke farmer the ones that have the spouts at the bottom you typically need, you're going to need a cinder block a stool you're going to need something to sit that barrel on top of because the spout is typically an inch or two from the bottom so that you can get all the water out of that but you can't get to that spout unless you're planning on hooking a hose up to it or something like that. Um, if you're not planning on hooking a hose up to it or anything like that. Now I have seen, I'll call them miniature hoses. I don't really know. Maybe that's what they're for. I've seen them in there. I don't know if they would actually fit. I'm going to look that up. If they would actually fit on the uh, spout of a rain barrel. But they were maybe a foot long. Which in that case. I could see you hooking it up to the rain barrel and just having that foot to put into your container and then turn the spout on, boom. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. <clears throat> and I guess you could you could kind of make a hose to do that. You could. You could make a hose to do that. Um, I'm not so sure I could, but I have seen people that hose, hoses have busted. They've cut the holes and they've put the the silver or gold in end on the back end on it again and they was good to go i don't know about all that i i'm not a fix it person i just see other people do it yes erica says i have a couple of home depot buckets and when there is a downpour i take the lids off other than that i keep the lids on and i do that repeatedly until my bucket has filled with water that i do have what and coincidentally i have a red one <laughs> y'all know i can't help it i love red I got a red bucket. It was filled with stuff. I emptied that bucket out the other day and put all that stuff somewhere else. Because I, I said to myself, my plan for this red bucket that I had, and I've been searching. I got the red bucket at Walmart for like four bucks. I can't find another one. 
I've been trying to find another one because the plan I have for this red bucket, because it does have a good solid top on it that fastens, is to take it out there to the garden and put all of my things in it, like my BT and my Dawn dishwasher liquid, as well as my little mini shovel and my little mini this and my little mini that. You know, my gloves. To put all that stuff in there, it's outside, it's on the deck. So when I go out there, that's another thing I learned. See, last year I put all my stuff in a bag. Broke Forma says red is my favorite color also. Yes, can't y'all tell I always got on red. <laughs> yes, I do wear other colors, <laughs> but not a lot. <laughs> yes. I, my thought process, well, last year I used, I used a, uh, like a bag, like a, oh, what do you call them? The recyclable bags that you get that are strong. I used one of those last year and I had everything in there. It was a big bag. And whenever I went outside to just go check on my garden, I don't care if I went out there three times a day. I grabbed my little bag and went with me because one thing I learned is that if you have everything that you need right there with you, you are more uh, susceptible to, to take, take care of things right there on the spot to say, okay, well, I have to remember when I need to come back, I need to prune that or I need to get that or I need to cut those dead leaves off or I need to do whatever because it's right there. So I figured if I put all this stuff right there outside, plastic container, it can rain, it can do whatever. I'm good to go because when I go out there, if I see something that need to be done, I won't feel like, oh, I got to go back in the house and get this. Because, you know, I'm going tell you, I get lazy. I, I don't know about y'all, but some days it's like, okay, this garden ain't going to have to wait. And I'm like, no, I can't wait. <laughs> I want to eat, so it can't wait. But I figured it would be easier if I did it like that. Yes, Carolina Ruth says, I've been researching garden ponds. If you can add fish to your water catcher, that's 5-Eleven ready to go. Boom. Yes, fish tank water. Anybody that's got a fish tank, when you get ready to clean that fish tank, you better find a way to keep that water. That's some good water. <laughs> and I used to have fish. I don't have any anymore. I used to have a big fish tank. I, now when I have a garden, if you clean, when you clean that tank and you're taking all that water out, you better find a container to get that water and keep it in. You right, Carolina Roots. Boom, there's your free 511 because you got the fish, you got the you got the fish, you got the water. Mm-hmm. That is an excellent idea. Yes. And yeah, you can do that just with a um regular fish tank. You don't you don't have to have anything, anything else, just a regular fish tank. So yes, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. But guys, we've been on here a little bit over an hour, so I don't want to keep y'all all night. I hope to see you all again next Wednesday because I try to come on every Wednesday around 6, 6 or 7, probably more 6 than 7. But um, thank you all so much for coming. I really do appreciate each and every one of you guys. Love y'all to death. Thank you so much. And I'll be sure to hang in there and see everybody's videos that I can and come to your lives because I love the lives because they be lit. Y'all be cracking me up. You all be cracking me up. Yes, Nick's Picks. It was so good to see you. And I've seen a lot of people in here I haven't seen in a while. So it's good to see all of you all as well. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. So you all have an amazing evening. Thank you so much again for coming and hanging out with me. And remember, anywhere you can sit a pot, you can grow a plant. And I'll see you on the trail. <laughs>